Welcome to the next tutorial of how to import 3D object into Pixera. And today I want to take a look to this SketchUp files. My colleague Florian creates for me a little stage because I have no idea about SketchUp. So he created a little stage in SketchUp and uh, sent it directly to me. And I will now import this one directly in Pixera. What Florian has to do is to export the SketchUp file in FBX. So we'll see what happened when I import the FBX file directly in Pixera. I open it, stage one, and um, wait a little bit. Here they are, is it? Stage version one, FBX here, and this numbers gives me directly the answer, oh, this file is too big because he, I think he created everything in millimeters and now I'm in meters, so it's much too big. So when I load it in, most of the time, lots of people have this problem. Uh, Pixar will not show anything up. Even when I press here, double click, or here inside, there is something, but you see it's, it's you cannot handle it. So what you can do is, of course, you can uh, change the scale. You have to go to project, and then you just say, okay, in millimeters, it was 1.001 uh, by 1001, and again, 1001. Double click here, and here we are. Super. So it looks fine for now, but when I click on it, you see, oh, everything is grouped, so I cannot select any screen and do anything with this one. So the problem what I have right now, I need programs like 3D Max, Maya, Cinema 4D and um, Blender because I have to change a little bit the UV mapping. So uh, when you get SketchUp files, you will have problems like this most of the time. If you create your own SketchUp file, make sure that you're not group this one on one layer or um, you have also texture on it and uh, try out a little bit between Pixera and SketchUp. What is the best way to create a SketchUp file that it fits directly into Pixera? Right now it's not working. So we have to delete this one again and move directly to 3D Max and import this part and 3D Max. So we'll see where it was, Pixera. There it is, open. So here you have a few information about it. More important is a scale factor. We say automatically at the moment because I want to show you how to um, import something and change something when you have no idea about this object. I say OK. So we'll see what happened. There it's coming up. Fine. So the first thing what I'm seeing is, of course, it's not directly in the middle. Yes. And uh, we have it also too big. Most of the time, I just save directly the stage in the right format for 3D Max that I can load it in if it's crashing or whatever it happened. If I make mistakes, it can also be possible. So it takes also a little bit of time. And as soon as it's finished, I have no idea what is the scale factor on this uh, stage? So uh, the best way to prove this one is just to open a box very fast here. So when I open a box like this, I see, okay, it's 202 meters by 197 meters. Check before if you are working in the right units here and there. It was your program, doesn't matter what is writing here, it has to be the right units on the uh, system units. And uh, 
I think my colleague Florian did everything uh, with 20 meters by 90 meter 50 or something like this. So it should be 10 times smaller. So I go to scaling, I select everything and uh, just say, okay, make this one a little bit smaller. So what we have here right now, just select this one, make a box on top of it, just to check it, 20 meter by 20 meter, fine, delete it. And of course, you see we are not in the middle, just move this one in the middle as well. Even the pivot point is not on the right way. But I want to, not to show you right now where you can change the pivot point. I can do it as well, but it takes a long time because we have so many objects inside. So when I move now the pivot point, suck. it takes a little time, you see. I'll Leave the mouse off and move it up. Tuck. Ah. Move it back. Ah. It is not in the right way. It's not directly in the middle, but we leave it like this because the problem what I have is it takes a really long time. I rotate right now everything and just say 180 and the set position. And now we have it in the right scale, in the right position, and hopefully in the right position. No, you see here, it's much too high. So we have to bring it down as well. down. Even this takes a little bit of time. Like this. Yep. Perfect. And now we select everything. Selected already. And before we are starting right now with all the textures, we just take a look if the scaling and the position and all this one is on the right uh, size. So export selected. Just say this is now stage version two. Save. Okay. And when it's done, moving to Pixera, stage two inside, and you see directly 20 by 20 meters around, move it inside. And we are looking at the moment from the back, so we're going front and see everything from the front. Looks so far okay, the right scaling, right position, fine. Going back to 3D Max, and now we're trying to put some texture on it. And uh, the first thing what we are doing is we are just take care of the screens. So here are the screens. This is screen number one, screen number two, screen number three, and everything is uh, edible mesh. So the first thing what we are doing is just say screen number one. Now we have here also screen number two. And this is screen number four. Uh, three, sorry. <laughs> number four. Um, so right now we are just put a texture on it. We had already the texture from the last tutorial. And this one is moving to number one. Just just checking so nothing is there. Uh, sometimes on SketchUp 
files is sometimes on the back, so it's nothing on the back. It means we need also the right UV mapping because we have no idea how SketchUp is handling the UV map. So what we are doing is just put the UV mapping on it. And here we are, we see number one, but it's also on the run. It's mirrored. So we have to rotate the UV mapping as well, like this. And of course, you have to do it for this one as well. And you see here, when I go closer, you see there are two, 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 lots of number two. It means that uh, SketchUp handling the texture and tiles. So we put the UV mapping on it. Everything is fine. Even here, we have to rotate it again. And it looks from the right side, 180 degree like this, and we are moving to the last one, even here. Put the green mapping as well on it, and we rotate this one. Super. So, what I want to change as well is the the box here, so the stage and the floor, if it's possible. And uh, when I move the floor, you see the stage is coming with, so it's one object. So this is something what we don't need to want. So we go to this polygon and just say this one has to be detached. We'll make it one object and we call the floor. Okay, and select this one again, delete this one. And right now, when we move to the stage, the stage is just a single block. Perfect. So first of all, of course, we just take care of the uh, floor. Now we put another content on this floor, another JPEG. So we take maybe, uh, no, we take this one. So take this one and just select it. Take a look, nothing happened. It's also visible. So same thing. There you see my JPEG. What I have to do is just, again, a UV mapping put on it. And uh, I just want to fit on it, maybe on the other direction. Uh, there it is. Hmm, well, it's not showing up on the other side. Now I can search for this problem, or I just say, okay, for me, it doesn't matter, because it's just a floor. I just rotate the floor. Oh, I just rotate the floor whole floor, whoop, and there it is. Oh, see now the pivot point was not on the right side. And this is, of course, a problem on that part. Saving. And move it again to the right position. Fine so far. Now comes the stage. I just also select the stage with the UV mapping on this stage. It's just a completely box. And I'm using maybe this one. What is this for? Texture, of course. Um, this texture looks like this. So you have here also this texture directly around and last but not least least we take this one and put also a UV mapping on it as well the box it's very simple search for the right texture 
maybe this one. Same thing. Oh, no, we can't do it. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Okay, so far. Good. Have a lot of texture on it right now. Of course, you can all put another truss color and uh, go to each uh, picture and change the picture as well. But make sure that you are just taking normal bitmaps for everything and not a uh, very complicated shader or whatever. So you find here on generals a lot of shaders, a lot of other kind of how to um, create a texture. But it doesn't work because FBX is a normal exporter for the object and can embed it just uh, normal um, textures and not bump mapping or or something like this. Okay, make sure that you are created as easy as possible. As far as we have also not a ray tracer uh, in Pixera, so choose your your texture very carefully as well. The size has not to be a 4K picture, it can be also just a normal 1000 by 1000 pixel picture or even less, especially on textures like this. Okay, we try it out, so we just select everything again. So we export. This one, and just say, this is now number three, save. Okay. So as soon as exported, you move back to Pixera, import the FBX file, and take a look if everything is like you created. Yep, fine, yeah. Super. Right now, just take a look to this part. Oh, this can be 280. This one is 1920. So I have to change the resolution for my screens. I select all three, just make projectable. Go to the composition, and then I just move this one here inside, this one here inside, and we have this one in the middle. Fine so far. Everything is working. Oh, I'm happy that this one is fine. If you have any question, just feel free to contact us. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this little tutorial and see you next. Thank you very much.